Well, hello, great southern ancient miniature man here, and I've got the unboxing of the War Games Atlantic Horses plastic boxed set. It's been out for a few months uh, in the northern hemisphere, only just arrived here in Australia in their warehouse, and they were kind enough to send me a box of them um, as soon as they got here, free of charge. So I am reviewing this uh, with that in mind. I'm going to be objective as humanly possible, uh, as I'll always be. Um, but uh, I want to get a good look at these horses, see what they're like and what they're good for. And I'm going to get a whole lot of potential riders and uh, do a sort of test to see which ones are able to ride these. Because obviously they're horses on their own. Most people aren't going to want a huge herd of horses with no riders. We're probably going to want to make some cavalry. So we want to know who actually can ride these fairly nice looking horses. So first up, you've got six sprues exactly the same. Uh, and at first glance you think well that's a lot of uh, combinations or duplications of horses but there's a trick to this kit which is pretty impressive so most plastic kits uh, you're probably aware generally have about three different horses maybe if you're lucky four most of the Victrix kits certainly only have three options uh, and metal metal sets as well when you get multiple horses you usually only have three maybe four different horses among sort of 12 to 18 cavalry sets so there's a lot of duplicating going on in there I always love a bit of variety so that's what attracted me to this set um, and the trick with it is that any right side of any horse can fit with any left side of any horse any head can go with any body and any tail can go with any um, any body once they're assembled so if you think about the number of permutations you can get out of all that it's quite a lot so we got any right with any left, so you've got three rights and three lefts, so that's nine. Already you see they snap together quite easily. You get these bits out, so that's all the, take these guys away, they're all the bits from one sprue. So any right can go with any left, don't take my word for it. Let's have a look. Quite a nice system of clipping them together. Right with left right with left yeah then any head so that's nine permutations and any head can go with any body that's another three oh, three permutations so 27 already then you get the tails and they're all the tails are different three different tails so 27 by three it's at 81 different permutations now and then you can have them without their uh, saddle cloth or with the saddle cloth Pretty sure the saddle cloths are exactly the same. So anyway, that doubles the number. So you're going 162 permutations of horses. The box is 32 plus, but I don't know how they calculated that. I think they're underestimating it dramatically. 162 permutations of horses out of this one kit, which is pretty incredible. I think it's amazing. Um, and so I love to get diversity. I've often uh, kit bashed horses or chopped heads off and replaced them, or you know, chopped legs and moved them around to get that sort of um, diversity. So you look, you can see that every horse is unique. But uh, with this one kit, you've got enough for 162 unique horses. Which um, you know, even if you had a huge cavalry unit, uh, I don't think the human eye could really detect uh, which ones were identical. Particularly if you painted them differently as well. So that is the best feature, uh, I think, of this kit. It's all good and well, but what if the horses are horribly ugly? There'd be no great value to it. But luckily they're not. They're beautiful looking horses. So in my mind, on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is a horrible looking uh, ass, and uh, uh, so 1 is a horrible ass and 10 is a thoroughbred, I would put probably horses like Victrix plastics uh, up at about a nine so there's a, a Victrix plastic very dynamic great musculature they always have lots of accessories um, and um, uh, yeah they would be my top on the other end of the scale you'd have the horrible old war games factory ones I haven't even got one well, actually I do if there's a head they are a definite ass or a mule a badly formed just ugly looking little little runty horses I've got a few that I've painted once they're painted they're not too terrible but they're really they're gonna be my one out of ten and that's them. Let me show you one more of them 
Mm, funny, funny poses, strange heads. Okay, so they're the bottom end of the scale. Um, who else have we got? So let's say um, a lot of the metals are a bit on the ugly side to my mind. So that is a um, War Games uh, factory. War Games factory, yeah, metal German horse. Looks like it's quite emaciated. Uh, that would be about a 3 out of 10. Then you go to the um, ones like um, the Gripping Beast, for example, the armoured ones, and they're a bit, a bit better. They're going to go sort of 5 out of 10. So for me, I would give these guys like an 8 out of 10. They're deliberately made fairly generic so that they can be used basically for any era from ancient right through to modern horses. Uh, so they don't have the sort of armour and adornment um, that some of the other ones like the Victrix Plastics do. But I have had correspondence with um, with War Games Atlantic and they've said they're considering doing specific riders for these horses and they would do sort of specific saddles for whatever cultural group or time era that they were designed to fit so that would be a nice addition so that's that's where they're at so the key thing i reckon so giving them eight out of ten so they're definitely nice horses uh the key question then is who can actually ride them so let's just have a look scale wise compared to some of the other guys so this is the victrix so they're very similar to a victrix size i would say maybe very slightly smaller the main thing with the Victrix is they're quite chubby horses. And again, they're almost exactly the same. The uh, uh, War Games Atlantic on the right, Victrix on the left. So almost exactly the same width as Victrix. Here's a that uh, runty German German one. Uh, compare it with the gripping beast is just maybe a tiny bit wider. The, a lot of the width though comes with obviously that um, saddle cloth which you can use without so there you see a guy without and it's a bit narrower so that'll give a few options for getting different riders on and I'll test them all in a minute um, so yeah I think that's what I'll do now I'll paint up one or two and then we'll do a test of uh, quite a number of riders that I've assembled to just see whether they're going to work with these um, excellent horses or not so back soon thanks okay time to test who can actually ride these horses so one thing just before we do go through a whole lot of different figures is um, I actually you might have noticed if you were a keen observer when I was looking at the sprues is I missed one of the heads on each sprue so there's actually four heads per sprue not three which changes the permutations of how many uh, individual unique horses you can make so we had three by three is nine bodies with three tails at 27 but instead of times three that should be times four so it's 108 variants there then if you say with or without saddle 216 different variants how's that <laughs> pretty impressive hey all right so i've assembled a lot of riders to potentially get onto these stallions and see how they go so first up we'd go with the victrix so i'll test each one on initially just on the horse with the sat or the saddle cloth if they fit that perfect if not i'll give them a second chance to go onto the um the one without the saddle so Victrix fits the saddle very good. Now unfortunately you can't buy these riders on their own, so it may be a little bit academic. Some of the companies do supply them, so each time I will let you know who will give you the riders on their own and who won't. Warlord Games would be next up. This is a small uh, Macedonian guy. Actually I've changed his head over to make him more of a Roman. He was originally a Macedonian. Uh, let's see if he can ride the one with the horse, so with the saddle. Uh, he's a bit tight on that one. The ones with the metal legs, you can potentially obviously bend the legs out a bit to fit them, but he's not going to fit as is. On the horse without the saddle, he fits quite nicely. So we're going to go no for the saddle, yes without the saddle. Um, and I'm not clear, they didn't get back to me whether they can supply horses or, uh, sorry, riders without the horse or not. So that's uh, an option. You could obviously make a very thin saddle cloth just out of green stuff or something like that to, um, you know, still give you the appearance of a, a saddle. 
underneath. So I think he could potentially work. Eureka Miniatures. Oh, he, I got one more from um, Warlord Games. This is a German one. So again, he's not going to fit on the one with the saddle cloth without bending his legs out significantly. And in fact, neither on that one. So he would definitely need his legs to be bent. Shouldn't be too hard. Let me just give it a go, in fact. So yeah, if you just bend them a little bit, he'll fit. So I'll probably have to review them without bending the legs. So we're going to say, um, well, no for saddle, yes for without the saddle cloth. Turn that music down a bit. Um, all right, next up would be Eureka Miniatures. Now, you'll see I've got a few riders here, and they're, despite being both Eureka, they're vastly different um, scales. There's another one and another one. So four Eurekas. Two pretty distinct scales. So let's try one of each. So this one is tiny. Not even close to fitting that horse and not even close to fitting that horse without some leg bending, which I have done with this one. And pretty easy, to soft, soft miniatures. So pretty easy to bend. And then you can get her to go onto that um, one with the saddle even. And easily on that one so that's one of the eurekas he's a more solid eureka guy and again he's too big his legs are too solid to get onto that one but he can go on the one without the saddle so i'm going to put a yes for without saddle no for with saddle by the way i'll put this um sheet up at the end of the um video so you can have the whole uh whole kind of spreadsheet there so that's eureka Who's next on the list? So first core miniatures. So they make lovely horses and riders, but they are a bit on the small side. So here's one I've painted earlier. Give him a shot on the horse with a saddle cloth. Actually, he does. Oh, there's a bit of a gap there. Let me show you. So he kind of he could sit him on. He looks a little bit awkward though. Uh, the one without the saddle, no problems. He fits nicely on that one. So let's give him a tick there, cross there. First core, a reasonable option. Who we got next? Aventine now. So Aventine tend to be a bit bigger, almost on the Victrix sort of Ajima scale. So he fits easily, even on the one with the saddle cloth. And Ajima, oh, sorry, Aventine are certainly happy to provide riders without horses. Next ones up are the Canadian company relic which do nice figures but again on the rather small scale just get the guy out himself pretty wide legs though he might be okay actually uh, oh yeah he fits on reasonably well there might look a bit silly because he's so small compared to it but he fits on easily on certainly the one without the saddle cloth and reasonably well on the one actually with the saddle cloth so I'm going to give him a tick for both of those and they did say that they were happy to provide riders again without horses uh, next up is Ajima so Ajima miniatures um, they don't normally provide the riders on their own but they did say you know you could email them and they would look at it they may be able to do a special deal particularly if you wanted a whole lot of them I find their riders are quite good, but their horses are a bit ugly. So if I was to do any significant cavalry with them, I would definitely want to use alternative horses. This guy is meant to be Hannibal. He doesn't fit on that horse at all. And he doesn't fit on this one. So he would need a bit of stretching of his legs. And his legs are attached to that cloak, so you probably couldn't do that with him. This is an Etruscan. Ajima Etruscan and up two narrow legs for the saddlecloth horse. The one without he will fit. So I'm going to give him a no way with the saddlecloth and a yes for the without saddlecloth. All right. New line next. Again, make nice guys um, actually the horses their horses tend to be really good because they have interesting armor their riders are a bit on the ho-hum side and he's too small so i don't think new lines an option 
um, to go with these horses either way cross cross okay moving on to gripping beast next so we've got a gripping beast what's he a goth i think he is goth rider he might be fine for the big one let's try it yeah. onto the one with the saddle cloth this feels a bit awkward he's oh yeah he's probably designed to be on his side like that anyway yeah i'll give him a a pass for that one and obviously easily fits on the one without so that's yeah, no problems although they don't supply the riders separately uh, next along is the Saga Age of Hannibal figures uh, made by Gripping Beast but metal so here's Carthaginian um, Saga Age of Hannibal guy let's see if he goes on to that not with without bending and he can just fit on this one so we'll give him a yes for without saddle cloth he's not a great fit but he he could and certainly if you bend him a little bit he could fit a bit more easily give it a shot actually yeah so now he fits fine so we'll say yes for without saddle cloth no for with saddle cloth um Gripping Beast Metal, so I assume they're the same size as these Saga Age of Hannibals. So uh, we'll just say no to the without, and uh, sorry, no with and yes without. And they do uh, able to supply them separate without the horses, they did say. And then last up on the list would be Fireforge, uh, which makes some nice um, step cavalry. I'll just uh, put a Arabic head on this one, but it's from the um, yeah the step cavalry range. So he's got quite wide spread legs, and he fits absolutely perfectly on the one with the saddle cloth. So very good. So there you have it. So the only one that's a definite no is the new line. Um, the best fits are the Victrix uh, and surprisingly the Relic, even though they're fairly small figures. Gripping Beast, perfect, and Fireforge are perfect. Um, so that's the fittings. I hope that's useful. Uh, so I'll put this up um, now and then I'll put it at the end of the video. And then the next segment I'm just going to show some completed, uh, um, completed cavalry and Etruscan chariot. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, well I'm very happy to be able to show off these beautiful War Games Atlantic horses. I'm really happy with them. I think they uh, have come out fantastically well. I did find them quite easy to paint and I've modified a few of them just to add a little bit of interest. So I'll give you a look at each of them uh, in turn here and then we'll stick them on the turntable and give them a gallop. First up we've got this Etruscan chariot which I've actually um, scratch built the chariot guy at the back's an adjima this one's uh, very much kit bashed and it was actually not too difficult the these bits are out of sprues and the horses of course are for games atlantic i just made those little uh, sort of cushions underneath the, the wooden yoke to protect them i'm pretty happy with how that's come out slightly different tones on the horses um, but basically just speed paints, uh, they were actually Citadel ones come out pretty well. Uh, who we got next? Let's have a look at this guy, he's a Ptolemaic successor. So he's got the saddle cloth there. Uh, I've done a couple of Iberians, grey one. Again, mostly just um, with the grey. I think there was a Citadel speed paint or contrast paint they call them for the horse. And painted the shield, and I added that little saddle, mm, sort of sleeping rag cloth bedroll, whatever you want to call it, at the back there. Next, Iberian.
sandy coloured horse here. And I've added those little ornamental bits on the horse's forehead and on the front uh, strap there. And the saddle cloth is a custom made one. They just made, added a bit of green stuff. So it's quite easy to do them for the slightly narrower riders to make them fit. Had no problems with that. This is the same story. So this is an Adjima Etruscan rider, metal guy. And he was a little narrow for the saddle cloth. So you can just see underneath I've made a simple one out of a bit of milliput, I think, in that instance. Horses are great, they've got a lot of character in them and uh, as I said earlier, so many different permutations. One more, a grey, it's a successor. Again I made some ornamental stuff just to add a bit of interest to the front of the horse there. One criticism I was going to give of these horses is that all their tails are fairly uh, vertical and just going down and it's nice to depict them in full gallop with a tail going straight out but I found it actually very easy to do that they've got a little almost a right angle connection on the end of the tail that goes into the tail hole in the back of the horse and you just snip that off and then um, uh, you can put it I just used a file to enlarge that hole slightly and then easily um, put the tail back in so uh, you can have it as if he's galloping full stretch which I think that one looks like he is so i'm happy with that so i'll just chuck them on the turntable give you a quick spin and another angle of them here comes the etruscans the outrider protecting the royal person in his chariot Chariot's actually um, plastic base, just from a base for some miniatures I got from one company, and then the uh, metal sort of chassis of it is uh, just out of cardboard, in fact, and then the yoke and the, the main um, timber frame is uh, just out of a sprue, um, the edge of a sprue, basically, with the bits chopped off. So it cost me nothing to build that. You can see the Adjima guy, even though he's quite narrow, it fits quite well as long as you don't use the big saddle cloth. Right, I'm going to remove these and put up the Iberian cavalry next. In fact, we could do them and the successes on the same circuit. The face of the horses are really lovely. Four different heads, different faces. impressed with these horses. I think I'll use them extensively in the future. I've got a few metals already. I'll obviously use them up but then um, I'm going to try wherever possible just to get uh, riders on their own and use these horses. They're fabulous. Greg from Adjima did mention on his um, Facebook Post that he was considering just designing riders in the future to fit these horses rather than continuing on with their metal horses and I think that's uh, quite an interesting and a nice idea and it would be great if some other companies did similarly I think. I love the fact you can get fairly generic things and you just customize them to whatever uh, you know style you like and the idea of uh, War Games Atlantic doing specific riders and specific saddles uh, to fit these is also a great one. I very much hope that comes to fruition, but it will depend on how good the sales are, I guess, of these kits. So if you're contemplating buying them, 
get some. It'll help everyone. Uh, all right, I think that's a long enough video. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope it's useful. And um, let me know what you think of the horses. If you've got other uh, riders from other manufacturers that I haven't mentioned, it'd be interesting to know whether they fit well or not. So uh, put a comment if you've got any um, ideas on that. All right, see you around.